thanks for joining me. Um, in this segment, I want to explain how to use solubility rules to determine whether or not a substance should be aqueous or solid uh, when water is added. So for example, if we add, I like to start with kind of sodium, this is for ionic compounds, and sodium chloride is kind of the penultimate um, you know, ionic compound. So if I took sodium chloride and I put it into water, that sodium chloride is going to dissolve or become aqueous. So soluble compounds would have AQ as their state. Uh, if it was a solid that formed or did not go in, it would be an S. So, um, for example, if I put silver chloride um, into water, and what would happen is I would end up with pretty much all of it still on the bottom as silver chloride, because silver chloride is insoluble. Um, it's considered insoluble. It's very, 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 very slightly soluble. Okay, and so you can't see that very well, but that's an S. Let me clean that up for you. All right, so how do we know? How do you read this? So all group one salts, all your alkali metals are all soluble in water without an exception. That means if I have potassium ion as my cation, sodium as my cation, lithium as my cation, for example, it does not matter what the anion is. It can be perchlorate, dichromate, sulfate, sulfite, nitrate, nitrite. It doesn't matter what my anion is. It will dissolve in water. Okay, so all group one salts. It's nice to know minimally your all rules. How much you have to know about these, whether they'll be given on your test or not, uh, depends on your district and, and what, your, um, what are the requirements. Um, if you are in AP, you really should know your all rules. If you know your all rules, you're going to get anything you need to um, out of that. I mean, you'll be able to figure out what's not soluble. Um, because you'll know that only one is a solid, and if it's got sodium in it, that's not the solid, for example. Okay, all ammonium salts, ammonium nitrate, uh, you know, ammonium perchlorate, it doesn't matter. All ammonium salts are soluble without exception. So if there's water present and you have an ammonium salt, and there's water present, so if I have um, NH4Cl, I know to put an aqueous there because all ammonium salts are soluble without any exception. All nitrates, chlorates, perchlorates, and acetates are soluble. There are no exceptions. So if water is present, you know, I go get a, a container off the shelf and these are solids, but as soon as you put them in water, it's going to make a homogeneous solution. So it doesn't matter what the cation is, all cations, if they're with nitrate or acetate or perchlorate um, or chlorate, they're all soluble. Okay? We'll all have an AQ by them. Now, chlorides, bromides, and iodides, they're pretty soluble, but there are some notable exceptions. In fact, this is how I would find out if, you know, how good my water was and if I needed to change my filter. If I add a little bit of silver nitrate in it, if I make a silver chloride, a white silver chloride precipitate, I knew that I had ions in my water and I needed to change it. So this would be sol a solid. If they are insoluble, ah, oh, Dina, if they are insoluble, they would be solids in the presence of water. Okay, so um, the exceptions are silver. Oh, what's this? This is a weird ion. Um, lead two, let's look at mercury one. Mercury one is what I call kind of a diatomic ion. It always comes in pairs. So it's diionic. 
I guess you could say. Diionic. I've not used that word before, but I like it better than diatomic. And it's kind of Siamese twins. Always comes in pairs. So it's always HG2. And since there are two positives, it's a total of two plus. So this combination of the two mercuries, each with a plus one, is written as HG2 2 plus. Okay? All fluoride salts are soluble except magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and lead 2. All sulfates are soluble except calcium, strontium, barium, lead 2, silver, and mercury 1. Okay? Hydroxides are typically insoluble. Remember, insoluble has solid with it. There are exceptions. That would be our strong bases, which are group 1, barium, strontium, calcium, and then we can't disobey our rules up here, basically, is what it's doing. Okay, and then anything else. So if you're reading this chart and you come across any other anion, sulfite, dichromate, um, chromate, uh, hypobromite, any other, um, we're going to assume that those are insoluble and hence would be solid unless they're with group one and ammonium. Again, we can't violate the first two rules up there. Okay, we, there, are, there are no exceptions to group one and ammonium, and so that's why they would be exceptions there. Okay, so we've got to kind of balance both of those rules. Um, so this gives you an idea of solubility rules and how we would use those to predict the states within a chemical reaction. Thanks for joining me.